Hi there, I'm Hoi from the Android machine learning team. Sometimes the default model in Google ML Kit might not suit your exact use case, and you might want to use a different model with APIs such as the object detection and tracking. So what do you do? Today, I'm going to run you through two things that will enable you to do just that. First, TF Hub is a repository of machine learning models that you can download and use. And second, MLKit object detection and tracking has now been enhanced to use custom classifier of your choice. So let me run you through how they all fit in. First, TF Hub. It's a repository of machine learning model from both Google and the community at Arch, and you can access it via this website, tfhub.dev. So how can you get the most out of it as an Android developer? The first thing to do is to filter it down to just the model that are optimized for running on mobile. So for that, we will select the model format TF Lite. And as you can see, we have a list of models that is suitable to run uh, on the phone. And uh, for some of those, you might see uh, the word quantize. If there are two models that are uh, the same, so for example, here we have mobile net and the, the same accuracy and the, and the same, uh, taking the same image, in this case 192, uh, choose the one that is quantized uh, because that will uh, enable you to uh, basically run it in a much more efficient way by using unsigned integer, which is a quarter the size of float. Uh, so give it even more speed. And um, also, if you have a choice between the default and the one with the metadata, then choose the one with the metadata. And this uh, basically is indicates that the model have a rich model description, which means that the uh, integration work that, that is required um, will be much less um, if you choose a model uh, with the TFLi metadata. And today we're going to use a, uh, or trying to choose a model that uh, basically can detect different types of bird. Uh, so to do that, I can go up to the search bar here and uh, start typing bird, enter, and here we go. We have the uh, vision classifier for bird. And down here, um, you can see that there's the hub module, which uh, means that you can use it um, online and uh, directly in your training. But in this case, what we want to do is to actually use it on the phone. So we want to download the, the model itself. So select one of the TF Lite models and uh, press download. So here we go. We have downloaded the model. At this point, uh, we should switch over to uh, Android Studio and uh, into a project that I prepared earlier. Um, so in this project, what we will do is we will uh, essentially do the analysis via uh, the Google ML Kit, uh, object detection and tracking. And uh, after that, we will basically render it to the screen uh, in a layer that, that we're calling the graphics overlay. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing is to um, copy over the model that we've just downloaded. So let's go to the finder. And then at this level, um, if you, um, at the same level as uh, the resource folder, if we create a new folder called assets, and in it, we will copy over the uh, model. So let's do that. Uh, let's go to downloads, copy that, copy, go back and then paste the item. Here we go. And then you can see that under here, the S, under the SS directory, uh, that's been reflected. And the next thing that we're going to do is to uh, configure the build.gradle file. So there are two things that we need to do in this file. Uh, the first thing is to prevent uh, the TF Lite file that we've just copied over from being compressed. Um, that's the uh, normal way that uh, the TF interpreter needed to work. And as a result, we need to um, specify a, a new AAPT option. Open bracket and say no compress for TF Lite files. 
Um, and then the second thing that we need to do is to uh, import the uh, MLKit um, object detection and tracking functionality. So down here in the dependency, we need to add a new uh, dependency. So implementation. So that's the import. And to check, press sync now. Um, if I mistype anything, then it will come back and say, hey, I can't uh, actually uh, sync with uh, this particular uh, repository. So it looks like there's no error, uh, and then we can now go ahead and code. So to do that, the uh, first step that we would do is to uh, basically set up uh, the local model. So let's do that. Um, in this particular project, what I've done is I've set up a uh, camera X analyzer. So here, uh, on the, in, in this class, what we have is an analyze method. And um, for each frame that the uh, camera X pass through, it will go through the analyze method. And then we can basically process that uh, using uh, the MLKit object detection and tracking. So let's go through that. Let's set up the local model that we have uh, just copied over. So this one. Um, so to do that, we need to load it up, uh, create a uh, private object. So private value uh, local model, let's say. And um, we can use the uh, local model builder. So local, whoops, local model, you can see is from uh, MLKit dot uh, builder. And we need to feed in where it is. Um, oh, actually, the first thing we need to do is to go and import that. So we just need to use that shortcut that is being displayed here and is imported. And then we go dot set asset file path and we need to specify the uh, file name. So in this case is AIY vision. Uh, let's see if I could just copy that. So if I go rename, then I could just copy this entire name rather than needing to type it out. Um, and then dot TF light. And finally, we need to build it. And that's it. Um, second thing that we need to do is to create, or the fourth thing that we need to do is to create an option object to specify all the different uh, parameters that we want to run uh, the particular model. Um, so in, uh, Google ML kit, we do this. So private again, uh, create another private object called custom um, object detector options and creating a new custom object detection option. So as you can see is this one and dot builder feeding in the local model that we have just created. And then set the detector mode. Now here with the set detector mode, you have two options. Uh, the first one is streaming mode, which runs with uh, lower latency and is suitable for tracking objects across the screen. But it potentially could return some uh, unspecified uh, bounding boxes or incomplete labels. Uh, whereas uh, with the single image mode, uh, then we'll make sure that all the bounding boxes and classifications are available uh, before it is returned. In this case, we're going to choose the streaming mode. Next, uh, I'm going to enable classification um, because the other way to use object detection and tracking is by just saying, hey, pick out all the objects here, regardless of what kind it is. Um, but in this case, what we want are birds in the, uh, in the image. So let's enable classification. And another thing that you can do is to set the classification confidence threshold. So we only return um, a value if it is above a certain threshold. So in this case, I might put say 80%, uh, 0.8 uh, as a float. And uh, I can also set the maximum uh, object label count. 
um, per object label count. So with each object, because you're running a classification against that, um, depending on your classifier, you can have multiple labels. Uh, so in the case of, let's say, if you run mobile net or efficient net, then you have a thousand different categories and labels that could potentially be returned. Um, and what we can do is we could uh, limit the number that will be uh, returned uh, per object that is being detected. So in this case, I'm just going to set it to one because I don't really want anything more than one. And that's it. So I just build that object. So that's the options built. And then finally, we need to create the object detector itself. Um, and this is relatively simple now that we have specified essentially all the different options. So again, uh, creating another private uh, file. Um, and we can say object detector, oops, detector, right, object detection dot get client, and then feeding in the option that we've just created. So custom object detector options, fantastic. So it's, we're now ready to uh, run the detector. So down here, uh, this is in within this analyze method. We basically, uh, or Camerix will feed in every single uh, image uh, that it wants to analyze through this method. Um, and the top bit of code that I've put down here is basically trying to set the correct uh, rotation, etc., and a, and a correct graphics overlay uh, dimension. Um, so they will actually do this correctly, and they will. Um, only be done kind of once the first time when when this analyze method is run, um, and then after that, what we will do is we will feed that uh, media image in and then process the image. So let's do that. So the first thing is to create a uh, an image that the uh, ML kit will understand. So uh, let's create a file and uh, image. And the format that MLKit work with is called input image. And something that is really remarkable is that uh, the um, MLKit team have produced a bunch of different methods to enable you to easily import different kinds of image. So in this case, uh, as we are using uh, camera X slash camera two, uh, we can choose the very top option uh, from media image. And this will then just take the uh, media uh, proxies image. So in this case, media image. And then um, also we can easily uh, rotate it as well by feeding in the rotation degree by just uh, accessing it via the image proxy. So under image proxy, um, you have uh, image info and you have the rotation degrees. Okay, let's put in a different line so that it looks a little bit nicer. And then finally, we will uh, use the object detector to process the image and to then set out uh, how we will deal with the output. So the first thing that we'll do is to call the object detector and say dot process image. That's the input image that we've just created. And the first thing that we'll add is a on failure listener. So in case anything uh, is going on, um, then we will basically log uh, what happened. So log.d uh, tag and it dot print stack trace dot to string. So just print out the stack trace. And then the next thing that we will do is what happened when we are successful. So in this case, we will say on success listener and um, I will basically uh, clear the graphics overlay first. And then uh, for each of the uh, detector object, although there's only one, uh, we still need to go through the list uh, because that's the uh, return type. So we need to go, hey, detected object in it. So the item that has been uh, returned and say graphics overlay dot add. And for each one, uh, I've got a custom uh, object called uh, object graphic 
feeding in graphics overlay and the detected object. So this bit will vary depending on how you uh, program your own graphics overlay. Um, so maybe not paying too much attention to that, uh, but just remember to kind of clear it and then to add those objects in and then to draw it. So in my case, I need to uh, run the post validate, uh, uh, sorry, post invalidate uh, method. And that will basically refresh the graphics overlay in my case. And then one final thing that uh, we to remember is that we need to add a on complete. Um, because one of the mode that you can run the um, uh, camera X analyzer in is um, giving you the latest image. Instead of processing every image that you get from the camera, you will only process the latest one. So let's say your processing takes a little bit longer and you basically get say frame one and you process. And then the next time when your processing is free is frame number 10, then you could just get frame number 10 instead of frame number two and have a backlog. So in that mode of running, uh, what you want to do is to release the uh, image proxy in order for it to feed you the next frame to analyze. So in this case, we need to add in add on complete listener, the fact that uh, in image proxy, we need to close it. So we need to say image proxy dot close. And this will enable the uh, camera X to feed you the next frame and for uh, this process to run again. Um, one last thing to note is that even though that this is being used again and again, and you might think, hey, do I need to add a on failure listener and success and complete? every time when I run it, um, instead of just kind of defining this upfront and run it once, the way that uh, MLKit works is that it attached these as tasks. So every time when you, uh, un unlike kind of other uh, listeners, etc., cetera, um, in this case, you need to attach it every time. So that's why we are um, adding this um, listener every time when the uh, analyzer is run. So that's the code, let's run it. And here you go, you can see the bird's academic name as well as the confidence level that the uh, trackers have. Um, you will also see that as I move the phone around, uh, the box stays with uh, the bird itself. Um, so that's the app. So to sum up, um, we have TF Hub, which is a large repository of machine learning models that you can download and use. Um, and those models come from both Google as well as the community. Second, we have MLKit object detection and tracking, which have now been enhanced so that you can feed in your own customer classifier. And um, if the default uh, categories does not suit you. So that's it. See you next time.